following sermon is rated PG due to mature subject matter. The following sermon is rated PG due to mature subject matter. Parents, please make use of our eKids ministry now. to week three of a series we've been in called Breaking Free, where in this series we're breaking free from the addictions that control us. We said on week one, it's not just the other people in our lives that are addicted. It's not just our friends. It's not just our family members, people that we know. It can be us too. We said on week one, we've all got something. And I gave you a list of some potential addictions. Alcohol and drugs, obviously, are the ones we are usually talking about when we're talking about addiction, but we can broaden this a little bit to include pornography or gambling, self-harm, addicted to how you look, your appearance, attention, approval, overeating, shopping, or materialism. And I gotta I got be honest, I gotta be honest, I think my daughters have this one, okay? I'm just, I'm just confessing that to you. I think they have this, and this is how I know, okay? They love to accumulate toys, okay? Anybody have kids that like you to buy them toys? That should be everybody that has kids or else you're lying in church, okay? And so uh, anyway, so this is how I knew this though. The other night we were doing a Bible study as a family. We do this often and, and we were talking about Luke 14 where Jesus said we should be willing to give up everything for him. And so we decided as a family that a way to apply this was that each of us should give up something, give something away is a way of saying we'd be willing to give up whatever Jesus asked us to. So we go around the table and each person says what they're gonna give away. Okay, so I say something I'm gonna give away. Emily, my wife, says something. McKinley, my nine-year-old, says something. And then we get to Karis, my seven-year-old. She's like, Dad, I can't think of anything to give away because I love my toys too much. I don't wanna give them away to anybody. I said, okay, that's cool, that's cool. I'm not gonna make you. She said, but I know I need to, so let me have a second to think about it. I said, okay, I'll give you a second. One. Okay, what'd you decide? And my daughter, my sef, sweet seven-year-old, she said, Dad, I thought of two things I want to give away. I said, what a good little preacher's daughter. Oh, what a good preacher's daughter. How godly are you? Yes, so God cares. That's amazing. You would give two things away. What are the two things, Karis, you want to give away? She said, I want to give away my mom's phone and my sister's blanket. That's what I'm going to give away. <laughs> I'm like, you can't give away other people's stuff, all right? She's like, I'm giving away their prized possessions, but I'm keeping all my stuff, okay? I just want you to know that. <laughs> Materialism in a seven-year-old, okay? She did end up giving something away. I think it was like a 50-cent book, okay? So uh, she didn't partner with much, all right? So we can all be addicted to something. Here's kind of how we've defined it if you're taking notes. By addiction, we mean practical slavery to sin. Practical slavery to sin, meaning you struggle with the same things over and over again. And on week one, pretty much everybody stood up and said, that's me. I got some things I struggle with over and over again. And so we all agreed, we've got to break free, right? If there's things we struggle with over and over again, it frustrates us, then how do you break free? Well, first week we said step one is you got to admit you've got an addiction, that you've got a problem, that you're powerless to overcome it on your own. And that the answer, what was the answer, remember? The answer, Romans 7, is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. That was first step. Second step, last week, was to confess. So you got this addiction, you admit it, then you confess it to other people, and you ask people to pray for you. And how, by a show of hands, all of our campuses, how many of you guys were here last weekend? You were here at church last weekend? Okay. Wasn't that so powerful what they did? Remember, we had a microphone up here at the front, and people came up. Well, you, they didn't have to do this. They came up, and they confessed in front of all of you guys. And they got all of you guys to pray for them. Well, if you were here at uh, 
Wednesday night prayer this past week, we asked people that had confessed to share if anything had happened in their life since then. And people were standing up saying they confessed and it like began a process of setting them free. It was liberating to share it with all of you and have you pray for them. It's a powerful step, kind of getting it out in the open because the tendency is to hide it. But if you get it out in the open, you can be set free. So we're doing a third step today. If you're taking notes straight from the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 5, beginning in verse 23. If you've got a Bible, you can pull it out or you can follow along here on the screen. Matthew 5, 23 and following, Jesus said, so, talking to everybody, hey, listen, he's saying, hey, listen, so if you're presenting a sacrifice at the altar in the temple, now let's stop there. Do we do that anymore? No, no, anybody have a lamb in their back seat of their car? Like, here, pastor, I got a lamb. Here's a bull. Is in my trunk? Okay, we don't do that. We brought a chicken today. Okay, we don't do that anymore because of Jesus, right? Because Jesus was the once for all sacrifice for our sin. There's no need for any more sacrifices, right? But Prior to Jesus dying as a sacrifice for our sin, they would bring, Jews would bring these animal sacrifices as a reminder that something has to die for their sin. Should be them, but temporarily, God's saying, this animal, the blood of the animal being spilt can reconcile you to me, and then a Savior's gonna come. Fully man, fully God, who's gonna die in your place. You see, Hebrews says, without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness. Okay, so now post-Jesus, we don't do this, but in a, in a similar sense, they were asking God for something. They would present this sacrifice as a way of saying, God, would you forgive me? Would you pardon my sins? So what we're doing is we're asking God for something in this series, right? We're saying, God, would you help me to break free? So we're saying, if you're praying that prayer, if you want God to help you, okay, if we're asking God to break us free, here's the next part. He said, and then you suddenly remember that someone has something against you. Hey, God, I want to break free, but you know that your addiction has hurt somebody. And you remember they have something against you because isn't that what addictions do? Addictions hurt people, don't they? Yeah, no doubt about it. They hurt people. Not just you. hurts other people, too. My wife's dad, he was an alcoholic, and it devastated their family. He ended up leaving his wife, his girls, my wife. The, her relationship with her dad for the rest of his life until he died was very difficult and strained. He never totally broke free, and it just it devastated their family. Addictions hurt people. I've known people addicted to drugs. They lose their children. Don't you think that hurts their children? Of course it does. People addicted to attention. In order to get attention, they put other people down in order to build themselves up, and then guess what? people get hurt. People that are addicted to pornography, looking at stuff on the internet, you're a user and you're an abuser. You're hurting people because you're creating demand for those images. You're indirectly abusing people. You say, Pastor, um, question this series, why are you bringing up porn so much? Like, why are you bringing that up a lot? I'll tell you why. It's one of the most devastating, widespread, hidden addictions in our culture today. And it is ruining people's lives and families. Let me give you some stats. That's why we're talking about this, because we talk about things that are relevant, that are true now of our culture to help people break free. Check this out. Every 30 minutes, a film, porn film, is made in the U.S. That's how much demand there is. The U.S. produces 89% of all of the porn websites. That's the demand from even people in our community. Next. Every second... 30,000 people are viewing pornography on the internet. Next. 42.7%, almost half of internet users view porn. Parents don't miss this one. Average age of initial exposure is 11. Parents, be careful. I was reading a book recently, said something about this that I thought was profound about how it can hurt people by John Dickerson. He's a famous author and also a writer for some national newspapers. He said, few national observers connect these dots for us, but the link between excessive pornography use or a porn addiction and pedophilia, rape, and violent sex crimes is well documented. There's a connection. And it's not just these things. I've seen this wreck marriages. 
I'm a pastor, okay? I hear about this time and time again. Heard it this week, somebody told one of our pastors, porn wrecked my first marriage, it wrecked my second marriage. Uh, I want to break free so it doesn't wreck my third marriage. I mean, this is serious. Addictions, there's no question that addictions hurt people. And this one is hurting a lot of people and nobody's saying anything about it because it's hidden. It's like taboo in our culture to talk about it. We want you, men and women, to break free. Okay, so Jesus is saying, if you're asking me to help you break free, you know somebody has something against you, like your addictions hurt them, here's what you do. Leave your sacrifice there at the altar. Leave your request, oh God, help me break free. Just stop that for a second, he's saying. Go and be reconciled to that person. Then come and offer your sacrifice to God. Then come and say, God, help me break free. Then come and say, God, help me with my addiction. He's saying, you truly want to break free? <laughs> you need to go sit down with your wife and tell her you're sorry. You need to go sit down with your husband and say, would you forgive me? I realize this addiction has hurt you so much. You need to sit down with your children and say, kids, I'm so sorry. I know this addiction has hurt you too. With your parents, parents, I'm so sorry. Jesus is saying, you are not serious about breaking free unless you're willing to ask for forgiveness from the people that you have hurt. That's a fact. And if you've taken AA or any other addiction recovery program, you know that reconciliation is a part of it. Jesus is saying you will not break free unless you call and meet with these people you have hurt and say, I am sorry. Would you forgive me? So the third step is this. If you're taking notes, you got to reconcile. You gotta reconcile relationships in your life that are not right. Because remember this, breaking free isn't just about repairing the addiction, but also repairing the relational damage done by the addiction. If you just break the addiction and the relationships in your life are still jacked up, you haven't totally broken free, have you? No. That's why this is so important. At the beginning of our church, I was working a lot, too much. I'd have to be honest and say I was addicted to work. When you're addicted to work, we call it being a what? A workaholic, right? I was a workaholic. I was working night and day and night and day. I had a good job, right? I'm building this church. This is going to be awesome. Good job. But I was working so much, I wasn't seeing my family a lot. I wasn't a good dad, probably at that time. I wasn't a good husband to my wife because I wasn't ever there. I was gone and one day my wife sat me down and she said, babe, I gotta tell you something. We hardly ever see you anymore. You're working all the time and she said, it can make us question, do you love us more or do you love the church more? I said, you're right, you're right, I'm so sorry. I, I love what's going on here. I've just, I've just put it before my family. I'm, I'm, I'm working too many hours and I gotta, I gotta pull back. Please, sweetie, would you forgive me? I know this has hurt you. I'm gonna fix this now, I'm gonna fix this. We're gonna make a change today. I'm so sorry. My girls were young at the time, but I thought I owed them an apology too. I think they were like four and two. So they didn't totally understand, but I sat them down. I said, McKinley and Karis, I haven't been a great dad recently. I've been working all the time. I'm so sorry. Would you forgive me? And of course, being so young, they don't totally get so like, okay, dad, let's play. You know what I mean? So, but I, I, I thought I need to, I want to be able to say I apologize to my kids. So many addictions that we could have. It's hurt people, hasn't it? The ones that you have. You said you're sorry. You asked for their forgiveness. Have you reconciled that relationship? You won't break free unless you do. Many years ago, <clears throat> I was in youth ministry and I was discipling a group of 12th grade boys. We were talking about this one night. And I told the guys, they said, yeah, Chris, we wanna follow Jesus. I said, well, Jesus said, you need to reconcile all the unreconciled relationships in your life. You're serious about it? They're like, oh, great, yeah, great 12th grade, like whatever. And I'm like, here's the thing. We can just talk about it, guys, or we can follow Jesus and we can do it right now. What should we do? They said, oh, we should probably do it. I said, pull out your phone. 
12th grade boys getting out their phone. So I want you to pray and ask God to bring any names to your mind of people that you've hurt. People that have something against you because you've hurt them and you have not said you're sorry and ask for their forgiveness. And if you really want to follow Jesus, let's put your big boy pants on, okay? Let's make some phone calls. Let's not wait. We've read this in the Bible right now. Let's do this right now. So I said, you go to this room. You go to that hallway. You go down here. Let's make some phone calls. Let's ask people to forgive us. About 30 minutes later, they all come back, smiling ear to ear. They're high-fiving each other. Yeah, yeah. Why? Because they felt set free. They said they felt like this burden that had been on their backs, on their shoulders, was lifted off because these people they had hurt, they knew had a grudge against them. They'd said they were sorry. They'd asked for forgiveness, and they were so excited. One of the guys said, hey, Chris, this was six years ago. So he was in sixth grade. He said, six years ago, I was a bully to this kid. He said, I was so mean to this kid. I feel bad about it. But that was six years ago, Chris. You think I should call him? I said, you think God brought that to your mind? He said, probably so. I said, I would make that phone call. So he, he goes in the other room, finds this kid's number, hadn't seen him in six years, and says, hey, man, I don't know if you remember me, but in sixth grade, man, I, I did not treat you very well. I was a bully. I put you down. I just want you to know Jesus has changed my life. I'm a different person now. I just want to say I'm sorry. Would you forgive me? I think the kid on the other end of the line passed out right there in the room. I think he was like, whoa, what? What? Who? Gee, who's? Oh, my gosh. What? Jesus? He said, yeah, Jesus changed my life. And I just want you to forgive me. Imagine not only how powerful it was to the guy making the phone call, weight lifted off his shoulders, but how powerful it was to that kid that was bullied, having the bully call him and say, would you forgive me? Reconciliation, church is powerful and it has the potential to set you free so why don't we do here today what i had the 12th grade boys do a lot of you are older than 12th grade all right so if they can do it so can you so what about this the band's going to come play in a minute but before we come and bring our sacrifice to the altar oh we worship you god oh god thank Jesus is saying, hey, 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 why don't you just stop that for a minute? I don't need this right now. Just kind of stop that for a second. Why don't you get on your phone when the band starts to play and text mom or friend and say, hey, uh, can I call you later? Can we have lunch on uh, Tuesday? I want to talk to you about something. Can we, t can we talk soon and begin the process of reconciliation? Now, when I did this a few years ago at Raider Church, I gave them another challenge. I said, and if you're brave college students, go out in the lobby right now while the band plays, make some phone calls. Go out in the parking lot, make some phone calls. Go, get, go sit in your car. Well, you don't need to come in here and worship yet, okay? Jesus says don't come and do that till your relationships are right. Why don't you go out in the car and call some people. Man, these college students, they went out in the lobby. I saw them in, in, just in tears on their phone outside the building calling people saying, I'm so sorry for the way my addiction has hurt you. Would you forgive me? It was powerful. So whether you just want to text somebody and set something up, or you want to go in the lobby and call somebody, you want to go sit in your car for a little bit, whatever, don't get in a hurry to sing in a minute. Jesus said, before you come and offer me all this, let just, just, just hang on. Go make those relationships right. Then come back and say, oh, God, I worship you, and help me break free and all of that. It starts with reconciliation. Get out your phone. Start sending some texts. Go out in the lobby. Go outside. Make some phone calls. Do what you need to do, church. But today, let's go step three. Let's get the relationships in our, our life that are not right, that are unreconciled. Let's reconcile them today. You can't control whether or not they forgive you. They may say, well, I don't, you know, I don't want to talk, whatever. But you can't control that. But you can control you saying, I just want you to know, I'm so sorry. Would you forgive me? And maybe when you do that, you'll feel what the 12th grade boys felt. This weight lifted off your shoulders and you'll feel like you are being set free. Let me pray. God, we need your help. This is not easy. <laughs> and it's not easy because we can be prideful. And this requires us to humble ourselves. Would you give people, God, the courage and the boldness 
to text people, to call people, to set up lunches, and to say to the people they care about that they know they've hurt, I am so sorry. Would you forgive me? We're not going to be able to do it, God, without your help. And so we pray that you would help us right now. And God, I know that as people pray about relationships in their life that are not right, one that may come to their mind immediately is their relationship with you. God, many people here today need to be reconciled to you. The relationship with you isn't right. They've offended you. We all have, God. We've all broken your law and offended you. And so our relationship with you is not right. And the Bible says that's why Jesus came. Jesus came to reconcile us back to God, to bring us back to God. He died as a sacrifice for our sins, to take our punishment. He died in our place and rose from the dead and has promised that if we'll turn from our sin and we'll turn to him, he'll reconcile us to God. Lord, there's people right here in this place at all of our campuses right now that need to be reconciled to God. I pray they turn to Jesus, say, Jesus, best I know how I commit my life to you and that Jesus, you would reconcile them back to their heavenly father. God, we look forward to what you're going to do during this time. Speak to us. Put those names in our mind. And then, God, help us to act and reconcile these relationships. In Jesus' great name, amen. Thanks for checking out one of our messages today. For more information about our church or to watch other messages, you can go to our website at experiencelifenow.com. Let us know if we can serve you in any way, and we hope to see you real soon.